All right, the UFC cut list, including record a UFC record holder among the cuts, but not Cake Boy. By Cake Boy, I mean Gabe Rudiger. Oh, I was like, Cake Boy. <laughs> Come on, Cake Boy. Yeah. Cake Boy, Gabe Rudiger, who had the terrible performance against Joe Lozano in the last UFC. We thought it was a, uh, you know, he was going to get his walking papers before he even left the octagon. Dude, seriously though, you know what? Say what you will about War Machine. War Machine, as odd as he is, the porn star. Yeah. Well, it was short lived. Dude, he's the uh, porn star now. But. Uh, but War Machine showed up and made good performances in the octagon. As a point star, too. He did. I didn't see it. He <laughs> did. He did a great. Uh, of course, his great fight in the, the tough finale against what is it, J Rod or whatever or something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, whatever happened to him? Mm, yeah. But um, great performance there. His fights in the octagon were, were were good. But then he said those stupid things, you know, about Tanner and uh, Evan Tanner and and and, and, he, and he's out. But the deal is, at least he had performances. At least he didn't do stupid things like that cake. Gabe Rudiger has done nothing Trying to deserve. To cake, yeah. No, no, no. But then he brought the cake to Joe Lozano. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, and, and, and that was stupid. It was like, I don't know what the set on the cake. But again, in order to do something like that, you have to have done something in your career. Yeah. Because you went out and won some podunk belt. Dude, he's the Indian Reservation lightweight champ. <laughs> yeah. And then he just Scoff gets at that. he just gets mauled. I mean, yeah. I, I would I, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen an ass kicking like yeah. Lozon did to him. Yeah, he, and, he was short of having his pants around his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> He's not tapping, dude. He's not tapping. I mean, <laughs> just, <laughs> Lozon tattooed a naked lady on uh, Rudiger's back, and yeah, that was it. it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bitch. Yeah, you are my bitch. I will tattoo bitch on your forehead. <laughs> But um, but that's the thing is he hasn't done anything and even to deserve another fight I yeah. I, I mean unless the he's only... got pictures of Joe Silva doing <laughs> something crazy I don't know how you can I mean is it worse the I mean is it worse some of the things that I mean now of course Bora Machine has gone off the deep end I think he's <laughs> yeah, serving he's time in jail now. <laughs> yeah, he's not freaking dude. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> did he really do as many bad things as Come on, how bad is it? Gabe Rudiger does? <laughs> He's not Cake Boy, at least. Yeah, Come exactly, on. Cake well, Boy. Uh, I, honestly, I mean, to say Gabe Rudiger is a uh, Gabe Rudiger is a media whore is the biggest understatement yeah. you could. I just think it's just like you know. I feel the bile raising up in your throat there. Uh, I just, I, I just despise him. You know, just the way he acted on the Ultimate Fighter show again, and he even admits it. That all, you know, you start getting a little sucked up into the whole, you know, uh, the TV show and being a, a character. And then he does the same thing when he when he comes out here with a cake and then getting his ass kicked by Joe Lozon. I don't think he deserves I think he disrespects everybody in there. Well, I guess the word was he took this fight on short notice, helped oh, the UFC out. Yeah, so not definitely. only is he not cut, he is scheduled to fight Paul Kelly at UFC 123. They're both coming off losses. Uh, and uh, Bulkman is uh, the loss that uh, Kelly sustained. So both of them, I think, are... I'd like to say they're both fighting for their UFC careers, but now you never know what the hell's going on here. Bol oh, yeah. So Paul but Ke Bulkman it was a tough Kelly, guy. Yeah. But, I mean, Bulkman was a tough guy. I think Kelly's going to stomp him. I think so, too. I now, think it's going to be not as bad as Joe Lozon, but I swear, Joe Lozon beat him, dude. Like, oh, he yeah. stole something. I don't I, like. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, dude, you just, you know. I don't know if I've seen a beat down that. Uh, but but that he did it there. with, I've like. faster ones, but this was just so thorough and well rounded It's almost like a, a toying with him. Well, know? there was, I remember when Cole Miller beat somebody. And this is kind of, I wish we had the live chat going. I know Tim Lee probably is saying it right now. <laughs> but he beat someone because he had made a comment about his, his brown belt in jiu-jitsu. And, uh, uh, yeah. and he, he made some comment about jiu-jitsu was, like, nothing or whatever. Yeah. And Cole Miller just beat the hell out of him oh, and submitted him. But, I mean, it was such a severe beating. But I, the, other than Cole Miller's beating and, and, and Joe Lozon, I think, are my two biggest ass kicking yeah. that I've seen. But, like, with anger. Yeah. Like, dude, oh, yeah. I want every freaking thing to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's some other fighters that have been cut. Some of them you might not uh, have heard of, but they are, in fact, cut. Darren Elkins, a, a lightweight fighter, had a pro record of 12-2, and 1-1 one one in the UFC, gone. Wow. Jesse Lennox, a welterweight, uh, yeah, 11, and, uh, 11 and 3 uh, record, 1 and 2 in the mm -hmm. UFC, gone. Uh, Ricardo Funch, a welterweight fighter, 7 and 2 overall, 0 oh and 2 in the UFC, gone. Mike Masenzio, a, a middleweight fighter, 11 and 4, 1 and 2 in the UFC, gone. 
two sign buys of middleweight fighter four and four a pro record zero and two in the UFC. John James Irvin, light really? heavyweight fighter, what the hell? fourteen and seven with an O contest, a UFC record of four yeah, and six. You're at the Phil Baroni line. Um, Phil's like totally sweating <laughs> in the corner, going, dude. Seriously, <laughs> don't mention my name. Yeah, we're talking exactly. about the cut list. Yeah, God. Uh, He's like four and six ain't bad. What? <laughs> yeah. Rodney Wallace, another light heavyweight, uh, nine and three overall, zero and three in the UFC, John. And Carlos Vamola, heavyweight fighter, seven and one overall, zero and one, one chance. Wow, that's done. amazing. One and done. And the most notable, I think. Well, James Irvin was pretty notable. But see that. But the funny part was, and we're going to get to this one, but. The James Irvin is surprising. That's very surprising. Just because yeah. he, he has, you know, he's been on both ends, but he's had some of the biggest uh, highlight reels you're going to find in the UFC. Still a popular fighter. Popular um, fighter. I mean, oh, he's And they were going to settle him back in. He had yeah. one fight back at light heavyweight, lost it. But, uh, you know, they still, it's like, I yeah. thought they should have, he, he was well worth keeping for preliminary cards, yeah. if nothing else. Exactly. But anyway. Or like fight night cards, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Here's the notable one: is heavyweight prospect and UFC knockout record holder for the fastest knockout in the UFC, Todd Duffy, cut inexplicably from the UFC. Now he only had a one and one record in the UFC, uh, six and one overall. He had the uh, the big quick knockout against Tim Hague in seven seconds of UFC record, but then followed up with a dominating performance yeah, a over Mike uh, Russo. Uh, but then ended up getting knocked out himself uh, with, like with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Now, he had been scheduled to face John Madsen next month at UFC 121, but was forced out with uh, an injury, a knee injury that he sustained, and then without any other warning or, or uh, mention as to why, cut by the uh-huh. UFC. So, I mean, I think this guy, you know, I, I think very highly of him. He mm. had a tough... The, the cardio, he lost by cardio to the, the, the Russo fight. Russo was tough enough to withstand that. I mean, but he was beating him. I mean, he was beating him up. I mean, soundly. It probably, is, it, it was like, like hitting a heavy bag for 15 minutes. You know, yeah. he just started getting tired. Yeah, so he got tired, and <coughs> uh, Russo was still strong enough to hang in there. But I think uh, Duffy will improve. I like him to pick up somewhere, maybe a strike force. I'd like to see that. Uh, and there's there's some interesting fight matchups for him there, and I think he gets his uh, reputation back. And, and we see if he doesn't go back to the UFC, I think he uh, could make a splash in a couple of years. Uh, you know, he's training at a good place, American Top Team. So, I mean, I think the guy could be back. But what do you think about this cut? Well, here's an interesting thing. And I, I think that there's, you know, you know how they go say there's three sides to every story. You know, one, my side, your side, the truth. Truth, exactly. You know, and so here, I remember when it first came out, the first thing that said when you know, I read that Duffy had been cut, it had a quote from his manager saying, you know what, I, you know, I, I tried to smooth things out between uh, with, with Dana White, but Duffy's just an ass sometimes. Ooh, wow. So that comes out. You know, he says he's just an ass. Um, <clears throat> you know, and then he got cut. But then I read an interview. Uh, he was on uh, MMA Junkie, uh, you know, talking with our guys. And he came off, I mean, if he, he went to, like, PR school. And he was talking that, you know, that yeah. he... Yeah, that he understands the situation. You got to have these performances, and he's hoping to fight in some, you know, other organizations. He'll probably fight like Shark. He's not going to go to Strike Force. He says he's going to get a couple of victories under his belt. He said he wants to fight. He would love to fight, you know, twelve fights in a year, get some victories under his belt, and work his way back, you know, prove himself to the UFC. He said all the right things. He came off as a humble guy. Everything this article is the best. So that's why I'm saying it was so weird that this he's being an ass because it has to be a personal thing. And I know is is you know the situation with what was it the fight that he Madsen was it the fight he yes had? John Madsen I guess he you know he had some nicks and you know uh, nicks and bruises or something not a total knee injury but he wanted to get 100 percent healthy for his next fight because he said he felt he had this knee injury when he went into his last fight that he ended up getting knocked out in and he said that affected his movement and his stand up and everything else and he wasn't able to shoot so he said he wanted to get 100 percent for this fight so I guess he turned down that fight. So that must have pissed somebody uh, off that, you know, maybe Dana got, got mad. Fight hurt and yeah, and, he, and, him, and he said something because this is a irrational firing. This guy's a star. It's funny. We get a lot of magazines are sent to us, but, I, you know, I always talk about Fight Magazine, different MMA magazines. This guy, since that seven-second knockout, he went from, like, unheard of to, like, every other page and supplements and all of his other sponsors. Well, the guy, you know, not only he had the big knockout, but he looks like a poster boy for uh, MMA fighting. Big, 
uh, you know, great physique, and, and you think that this this guy could be a star, and, and you want him to, you know, he could be like an action hero, like Dolph Lundgren kind of guy. But I guess, too, another thing is he said some disparaging things about the UFC, or kind of indirectly. He, he's on this thing called the Underground, which is, I guess is a really big... Uh, uh, what is it, you know, where people blog MMA, and stuff, uh, MMA, blog. Uh, blog, or whatever, chat room. Um, really popular. And I guess he got on there as himself, you know, and, and he was, like, kind of soliciting, saying that, you know, in between fights for, like, you know, he'll do stuff for money, you know, like he's not getting paid enough. Wow. So, you know, where that might be it. So there's, there, you know, all kinds of little, you know, things coming out there of the woodwork. But it has to be something. You don't get fired when you're Todd Duffy... And, and he's a star is born. He's star a, in the he is a star that he could be a star over there in Strike Force. But he wants to get back in the UFC, saying all the right things now. All that stuff in the, is in the past. And uh, I, I would I think he's coming back. I, I think he's got to eat a little crow, but he must have pissed off Dana. And that must be one of those situations where you forgot who you were. I guess so. Brock Lesnar can say certain things. Todd Duffy cannot. <laughs> and don't go on the underground soliciting money. Like, yeah, I'll trade you. Yeah. 